Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffrey back with another video. Hey, today I'm doing a video. This video is going to be about 20 minutes long or so. But this is probably one of the most important videos y'all ever watch. Uh, I'm doing no cooking in this video. But it's a very important video because I'm going to give you a lot of tips and details of what makes old school soul food come together. There's four parts to this video. Number one part is the spices and seasons that I use and different things that I use in my food to make it uh, taste good and look good. Uh, number two, I'm going to tell you about the pots and pans and things that I cook with and also where I purchase them from. A few of them have to give you brand names and things like that and why I use them and the pluses and minuses of using different pots. Number three, I'm going to tell you about the utensils and knives and things that I use on a daily and weekly basis when I do my videos. And number four, I'm going to tell you about a lot of kitchen gadgets that I also use to make my, you know, old school soul food videos and even my cooking experience a lot easier. So I'm giving you a lot of behind the scenes of what's going on, what makes my videos come and uh, upload and you know it's a learning experience this is a lot of things a lot of questions people have asked so i started to just do a video of it so anyway let's get started here like i start all my videos please like and share and comment on this video give it a thumbs up please subscribe i never tell people to subscribe it's a little red subscribe button down on the bottom so please do that so let's get started okay i'm gonna try to do close-up shots so you won't see much of me close up of what i'm talking about Okay, first thing we're going to talk about is roux. I get this question so many times, at least 10 times a week. What is roux? I use roux a lot in my cooking ingredients. I use it in my gravies and soups. Sometimes I use it in my beans. I use it to thicken them. It. It's a thickening agent. It's two parts to this. Two things in roux, butter and flour. It's 50% flour, 50% butter. The easiest way to make this roux, I'm going to make it very simple here. A cup of flour, two sticks of butter. A stick of butter is four ounces. So you get two sticks of butter and a cup of flour. You melt the butter in the pot, put a cup of flour in there, mix it together, let it heat up five minutes, turn it off, pour it in a bowl. I always keep a bowl of roux in my refrigerator at all times. I use roux all the time. This will stay in my refrigerator if I, I mean, according to how much I cook. Stay in my refrigerator a couple of weeks. There's nothing in it to make it spoil. It's just butter and flour. And it's good to have around. You want to thicken something right quick instead of using cornstarch. Cornstarch I use for a lot. Like pies and desserts, I use cornstarch. But with heavy things like gravies and beans and, cash and, 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 and stuff like that, I use roux. And I use butter. And I use, matter of fact, I use salted butter in mine. You can use unsalted. But back to what I was saying. This holds very good in the refrigerator for weeks. I mean, it's nothing new to make. Just cover it up. I keep mine in this bowl right here. I put saran wrap on it, a foil, put them back in the refrigerator. When I need some, I scoop a little out. Of course, this is a lot of loose. Sometimes you'll see it loose because I had it set out a while, but it'll get a little hard on you. It works good. It dissolves good in whatever you're making. So that's what roux is. And I'm also going to hit the end of this video right in there what roux is. Very simple. It's half flour. Half butter. If you use a tablespoon of butter, use a tablespoon of flour. If you use two cups of flour, use two cups of butter. It's very simple. Butter, I got a cup of flour is eight ounces. If you're doing in measurements, it's eight ounces a cup of flour. Two cups of flour is 16 ounces and so on. Four cups is a, a, a quart or whatever. So anyway, that's very simple. The next thing I'm going to talk about is my seasonings. I don't use a lot of seasoning. I go through this a lot. You see a lot of people using 20, 30 seasonings on food. I do not do that. You do not want to overpower your food with seasoning where you can't taste the food. All you're tasting, all these spices and stuff. It just, it just, it, it really, that really turns me off. You want every food, especially protein, has a natural flavor. All you want to do is enhance that food and bring the flavor out of the food. So I only use a lot of seasoning. One thing I do use, kosher salt and white pepper. I keep a bowl of this. I use Martin kosher salt and white pepper. This white pepper lasts me about a year and a half because this stuff is very potent and very powerful. So I use a four to one method, meaning 
I'm gonna pour a little of this. I got some already in there. This will be about a about a cup of kosher salt. I always use Martin. You can use whatever you do. I use Martin coarse kosher salt, and I'll put about a that much white pepper in there. That's about a about a teaspoon. It don't take much white pepper. You do like a four to one or five to one method. And I stir it up like this, and that's it. And I got my salt and pepper already mixed together. And I use kosher salt in the in food in where you use kosher salt because it's easier to pick up. Look. And then great then the iodized salt. It's easier to just pick up in there, off your fingers. That's it. Into your food. And I'm pretty much getting I a teaspoon or whatever. You can see me when I season food. I've been cooking for I'm going into my 40th year of cooking. I've been cooking since I was 12 years old. I'm just turned I'm 52. I'll be 53 next year. I've been cooking for over 40 years. And a lot of tips I learned throughout the year, but this one is so easy in the kitchen. If you cook as much as I do, I cook five days a week, y'all. Sometimes six days in day in my kitchen. I cook a lot. So that's why I have a lot of salt and pepper like this. This might last me about two weeks or so. I don't need this stuff is very be very careful when you use kosher salt. It ain't like iodized salt. I mean it can be very salty, so use a little at a time and taste it and go from there. Okay. On to the next step here. I hope I ain't boring y'all, but if I am, y'all cut the video off. Cause like I said, it's no cooking in this video. It's all educational and tips. Okay, the next thing I do, I need, I use three seasonings. If I used to use two, now I use three C other than salt and pepper. I use three generic seasons. Cabernet. I've been using this since I was 18 years old. This here. You can find this in Walmart and Kroger. ATB don't have it. Walmart has this. I've been using this religiously since 19, what, 84, 86, 1986. This is all-purpose Greek, cavernous Greek all-purpose seasoning. This go on everything, anything, fish, chicken, soups, everything except, of course, desserts. This thing is amazing. It, you can't, it's not hard to see. It's a yellow thing. It's over there in the season where all other spices here. Cabernet's Greek season. You go to Walmart. I know that Walmart has it and Kroger's have it. H-E-B don't carry it yet. So that's one item that I use. Another thing I use is granulated garlic. I don't use a lot of garlic powder. I don't use a lot of garlic salt. I use granulated garlic because it flows in the food better. I've been using this for about 15 years. I've been using this. So I use these two a lot. Now this is a new one I come up with that I've been using the last two years. So this is my old school soul food shake. It's made by a guy named Steve Brown. I've been working for, with him at my real job over 20 years. He has a shake company. And he's been creating all these shakes and stuff. And I've been tasting them throughout the year. And he finally made one that just really blew up. And I could not resist to put my label on it too. It's called, my favorite one is the spice. <clears throat> it's the sweet and spicier. That's the, that's the flavor I use. To get this, now y'all listen correct, I get this question so many times. How do I get the Uncle C shake? How do I get the old school soul food shake? I'm going to put a link at the bottom of the description of the video. Also, I'm about to tell you again. Go to UncleSteveShake.com. UncleSteveShake.com. Go to that website. He has a website. He has about, I bet you, I haven't been on a website in a while. I bet he have over 30 seasons flavors. The one I like is sweet and spicy here. That's the one I cook with all the time. I have other ones here in my house that I use. This is the one I use the most of. You can pick whichever one you like. I've heard uh, uh, reviews from people that say that they uh, have other ones that they like. And here sometimes he'll send you a little sample ones in there with the order when you order it. to let you taste the other ones. But this is the one I use. Back to what I was saying. Go to UncleSteveShake.com. Pick out the seasoning that you want. I use a sweet and spice here. In the special instruction box, when you check out, ready to pay, put in that old school soul food in the special instruction box, and you'll get my label on there, just like this, with my brand. See, my, that's my old school soul food brand. You see that in everywhere. You see it all in my kitchen on the wall right here. That's old school soul food brand. You'll get this label on the, he, he'll know that you're old school, part of the old school soul food family. He'll put that label on there for you with his name and all that underneath it, but you'll get that. 
So just want to clarify that. I get this question all the time. How do I you get the old school soul food uh, spice? That's how you do it. And this stuff is awesome. It's good on fish, chicken, everything. Just like this cavernous that I use. It's just as good. It's just as good. Okay, last two things, and then we're going to close this part out, and I'm going to go to my next section of the video. Two things I use, cornstarch and baking powder. A lot of times I don't go with name brand, but these two particular ones I do. I only use Argo cornstarch. Argo, that's all I use. It thickens quicker, and it's more smooth. I've tried to use off-brand cornstarch. It doesn't thicken as fast. If it do, it lumps up too much. This stuff is awesome. I use Argo cornstarch. That's the only kind of cornstarch I use. Just to let y'all know. Everybody, you might have a different opinion. This has worked for me. I've been using this since I was making pies at 12 years old. This is what I've been using. I started making pies for the church. That's another story on another video if y'all want to know that story. But this is what I've been using for years. Also, baking powder. Clabber Girl. Clabber Girl, uh, <clears throat> this is a, this is a, Hold on just a second. This is baking soda I got in my hand, y'all. Hold on just a second. I have a girl here. You know I am out of the I am out of the clabber girl. This it right here. Baking powder. Clabber girl baking powder. You see it right here? See the little lady on there? I've been using this one for years. It's the only one I use. Because it's double acting, meaning it acts with the acid. When you put it in the oven, it works with the heat. It's double action, <clears throat> meaning you're guaranteed to have a rise in your biscuit, your cornbread, your whatever you add in it to to get a rise. It's a double acting, meaning <clears throat> you have a guaranteed rise in your biscuits and stuff. When you see my biscuits and rolls and, not rolls, biscuits and cornbread, things like that, because I always use Clabber Girl baking powder all the time because it's double acting. So anyway, I'm gonna close this part of the video out. We're gonna take a break. I'm gonna rearrange this counter. I'm gonna come back and show you the pots and pans that I use to make my videos on a weekly basis. Something you might be able to purchase. And it's very important, as I'll tell you in the next video, the equipment that you use to cook with is one of the most important parts of your cooking process. So we'll be right back with the pots and pans. Okay, y'all, we back again. Okay, this second part here. Pots and pans. This is one of the most vital, important part of cooking is equipment that you cook in. It can make a difference between something burning, scorching, getting burnt, uh, cooking properly, cooking evenly, is the pots and pans that you use with. The number one pots and pan pots that I like are Dutch ovens. I have, matter of fact, I have five of these things. I have two sitting here, I have another one here, and I got other ones around the corner. Sometimes I have four going at a time. I tell you at the end of the video why I have so much cooking at a time sometimes. I'll let you know, but Dutch ovens. These things can range from the from price of 50 bucks all the way up to, shoot, I've seen some for $350. But I, I'm lucky and blessed that I'm a frugal shopper and I'm a very detailed shopper when it comes to cooking equipment. These cost me, matter of fact, these here cost me 50 bucks each and I got a bigger lodge back here that cost me 75. Let me give you a little tip. Places that I go, Bed Bath & Beyond. Go there, people think this place is expensive. Sometimes they have sales, They're unbelievable when they have stuff 20, 30, 40% off. You have to get on the email list and you'll get some good deals there number two home goods which is a partner of marshall's and tj maxx don't go to marshall and tj maxx for cooking equipment go to home goods they are a parent company of tj maxx and and uh, uh marshall if you have a tj maxx or a marshall's card you can use your credit card there at home goods they company take stuff from dealers macy's Kitchen equipment and I'm going to show you casserole dishes later that I got from there. It's like 50% off. I have a Dutch oven. I haven't used it yet. Just like this pretty much. I got it for 25 bucks at Home Goods. They have stuff. The stuff is, the store is not like really like Macy's and Dillahouse, beautiful and organized. 
This stuff is just piled on the shelves, and it's like a scavenger hunt. I go in there, I stay in that store for about two and a half hours looking at things. Because awesome deals and awesome stuff you can find at home goods. So go chop around in there. But back to the point at hand. Make sure you have good equipment. These things are good because you can cook them on top of the stove and in the oven. And they take very, unless you're a horrible cook, it's hard to stick these things. When you finish cooking, all you do is kind of put the soap in the washing in the top of the, uh, I'll never put mine in the dishwasher, which you probably can. I wash them on top of the stove, they very seldom stick. They coat it so nicely, and the temperature of these, I don't know how hot they can get, but I never burn nothing in them. Even when you get something in them, it's hard to burn in these things. So invest at least one, like I said, I, this is what I do for a living. This only job I've had is cooking since I was 12 years old. I never had another job. All I know is cooking. So I have a lot invested in cooking. That's what I do. So anyway, try to invest in one of these if you can and you catch them on sale. Go online, like I said, get in Beth Bath & Young, mailing list, even William Sonoma. Don't buy any from William Sonoma. They got them French ones. It's the same exact thing as these. This one here I have here is a large L-O-D-G-E. And I don't forgot the name of these that I got at home goods, but a large. Same as that, same heavy duty, does the same thing. So, yeah, try to invest in if you lease one Dutch oven. I have, like I say, different sizes. So, yeah, it's an awesome uh, piece of equipment to have. I even caught one of these uh, Dutch, I call it Dutch oven skillet. I got this one at Home Goods for 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Heavy duty skillet. Only thing I don't like about it, you have to be careful with it when you're frying. Because it tends to slide on, the, on my gas oven. This is probably good for electric or... Uh, electric ovens but with my gas oven it's kind of slick so i have to be very careful when i'm using this for 10 bucks awesome awesome deal but anyway let me keep going okay another thing when you're buying pots don't go to walmart buying them you see them walmart you got some pots in there pots pans all that for 50 dollars 24p don't buy them things that's garbage you want a pot see this heavy bottom you want a pot that has a heavy bottom on it because I guarantee you when you're cooking some soups, boiling some cream or butter or a milk or something, it's going to scorch on you in a minute because the bottom of the pot is too thin. You need a heavy bottom pot, something heavy duty. This is a six and a half quart pot I use for stocks and soups and things like that sometimes. I've had this pot for about 15 years. It's still good and going. Like I say, spend the extra five or ten bucks for something that's going to last you 10, 15, 20 years than trying to be cheap and the thing breaking in a year and a half. It's very important. It's just invest a little bit more money if you're really serious about your cooking. So yeah, I have this. I got a whole set of these. I got smaller pots. I got a little uh, 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 sauce pots I have. But it comes with a set of four. I don't know how much it costs. Back they even got a skillet with this. So yeah. Also, Cast iron skillet. You ain't old school if you ain't got cast iron skillet. I got two of these. I got another one in storage that I don't need. But I got a small one and a big one. Depending on what I'm cooking. If I'm cooking, frying a little chicken or whatever. Y'all see me do cobblers in these little things. They do it's ultimate. There's so many, so many, so many uses you can do with cast iron. But if you're in old school cooking, you know you got to have at least one cast iron skillet. Like I said, I got multiple ones of these. Okay. Back to the pots. You remember I told you don't buy a thin pot? This pot is very thin. I use it for one purpose. Cook pasta. That's it. I've had this pasta pot for 20 years. The only thing I do is cook pasta in it. You put the water in there. Water, pull this out. I dump the pasta right into the sauce. Another little tip of the day. Don't drain your pasta. pasta don't rinse your pasta off after it's cooked if it's possible. Put it right on the sauce. The reason is, the old Italian chef told me this about 20 some years ago. If you rinse the starch off of it, your pot, your sauce doesn't cling to the pasta. That's why when I make macaroni and cheese, I put this off, mix it right into the sauce. The sauce, the cheese sauce, you ever eat some macaroni and cheese? The cheese sauce goes all inside the noodles, all around. It clings to the pasta. You ever eat macaroni with the pasta all falling off? The cheese sauce is not clinging on the pasta because you rinse the pasta, the pasta off of it come out of the water. Invest in one of these. I've had this. I forgot where I got this from. I think it might was a gift. I get so many gifts too from people, but uh, from uh, kitchen equipment. 
But uh, yeah, just mess with one of these. You put your water in there, salt it, very easy. You don't have to drain nothing, you lift that right out, you pour this water out. Sometimes I dump the pasta right back in there after I drain the water off, put a lid on there. Put the pasta in here, put the sauce in there, and I use this as a, just a pot like that. So yeah, try to invest in one of these. Okay, let's move along here. I won't make this video too long. Cake plates, cake uh, pans. I cook cake in about three different, hold on just a second, y'all. I'm going to be ran off the guys, but I guess I'm not here. Y'all hear me rattling over here in my equipment pantry. I cook three or four different types of cake. Y'all seen my bunk cakes before. I use this, I've had this thing over 25 years. You can tell it, it does not stick. I've never had a cake stick in it. It is so well seasoned. All I do is spray it with some pan spray. I don't put the butter and flour thing. I just pan spray. My cakes come out every time perfectly because it's so well seasoned. And this is a fiberware. F-A-B. I think I got this in Macy's. No, I got it in Foley's. Remember Foley's back in the day? The Macy's took over. I got it Foley's when Foley's was going out of business. That's exactly where I got this in. Then I got this one here, which is my uh, Angel Food Cake Pan. This comes right out. Just flip the cake right out like this. I let, the, oh shoot, I let the cake stand like that until it come out. I have this one. I don't use this one a lot. But I do make a little cheesecake pan. Then I have these pans. I have four of these. You know, when I do my layer cake, these are so well seasoned too. Cake never stick in these pans. You can see they really old, but they do the job. I had equipment for many, many years. Then, of course, my I did my, when I do my sheet pan, sheet cake pans, I use this one here. Yeah. So that's pretty much it on the pans. Oh, I have two skillets here I've had for a long time. Let me share this with y'all. This video is getting kind of long here. I gotta move it along. Okay, these skillets I've had for so many years, but when I want to fry some chicken up, uh, cook some pan sauce and stuff, I got these skillets right here. Awesome skillets I have, non-stick. They didn't beat up, but they do the job very well. Like I say, I love them. They got the rubber handle on them. I had them for so many years. So I use these. You see me use these a lot in the videos. So. Anyway, I got so many more equipment. I'm just trying to touch a little base on the... Also, a sheet pan with uh, another thing you should invest in. Let me pull it out without making too much noise here, y'all. While I'm talking about sheet pans... Oh, I ain't talked about sheet pans. A lot of baking pans, baking uh, pans. I use these, of course, for cookies, biscuits, but I also use them, you all see me many times when stuff is no spill in the oven, I put my pots on here like this, put it in the pan so when you got spillage, you don't spill in your oven. So I always have, I have, I don't know, I think I got about 20, 20 of these uh, pans. And another thing I would suggest you invest in, a sheet pan like this with a wire rack, fit down in here, hey, Grip right there. Y'all see me use this a lot. I have three of these because sometimes I have a lot of uh, cooking in the oven and things that need to go on right. So, like I say, with this, I, this is what I do. So, I don't suspect you to have as many as much as equipment as, you, as I do, but it is a good thing to have at least one of them around and it'll come in handy. So, next we're going to come, we're going to be back. I'm going to talk about the little utensils I use, uh, utensils, spoons, forks, and stuff that I use to cook with. And after that, I'm going to show you the bowls, the little dishes and casserole dishes that I use. And I'll and, uh, and, 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 inter and integrate it in, too, with the uh, kitchen gadgets. So, anyway, we'll be right back. Sorry this video so long, but there's so many questions being asked, so I just had to make a video of it. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. If you're still watching the video, I really appreciate it. Like I said, it's going to be a long video, and there's no cooking in it. It's just educational. Some people, somebody out there might want to just... Some people might just be learning how to cook. I've probably been cooking for so long. And they trying. I'm trying to make their life easier on little gadgets and things that I use. So anyway, let's get on to the next thing. Utensils. Y'all see me cooking with all different kinds of utensils. I don't cook for them just to be cooking. There's a reason I'm using them. So let's get started. Knives. People say I use all kinds of knives up here. Why so many knives on my counter? 
as you can see here. A lot of knives on my counter. Why so many knives? The reason is, behind the scenes, I have you the two or three people working with me as I do videos. I give you a little inside information here. We do, I do six, seven videos in one day. We'll start at five in the morning and end at like six, seven in the evening. We'll do shoot all video. Of course, they don't come out the same time. That's how I can tell y'all this is coming up, this is coming up. That's how sometimes in the video, you might see me wearing the same clothes in two or three videos. Like, how does this guy, he, he never changed clothes? Because I'm shooting all the videos in one day. So there's a lot of chopping and, and dicing going on and prepping. And I'm very, very particular where I want things done. So I got a good team to behind the scenes for me that helps me a lot to make this thing succeed. So that's why I have so many knives. So different knives for different purposes. That's the reason it is. And I'll show you the cutting boards we use later on in this video. So that's why I have so many knives and things like that. Because there's a lot going behind the scenes. Once we finish one video, we clean up. Get the next one going. I might have something sometimes in the oven that you don't know. As I'm cooking something on top of the stove, when I cut the video off, I'll take that out of the oven. A lot of people do that. So it's just a little inside this tip of what's going on behind the scene. One more tip, one more behind the scenes thing. Thanksgiving dinner that y'all saw, I did all that in one day. It took me about four hours to do that whole Thanksgiving turkey dressing, cranberry sauce, giblet gravy, macaroni and cheese. All that, I did it all in one day. So just give me all a little inside tip. So anyway, let's get started here on this one here. My equipment, knives here. I use these knives sometimes, but when I'm off camera or whatever, I leave this here. It's a 10 inch chef knife. I use a cleaver a lot of times. These knives here cost about, this one costs about 110 bucks. This cleaver costs about $75. It's good, heavy, I've had it for years. I don't scrunch on my knives. Hinkle's good. Wish drop is good. Get your knives at Macy's, Dealers. They have good sets of knives. Sometimes you can go at home front. Sometimes you can get that. But don't buy no set of knives like this. This costs a lot. This whole set here costs about, I say about 75, 80 bucks. Don't buy no set of knives that cost 20 bucks. They're not going to last you. They're going to go dull so quick on you. It, it's not even worth it. So I ain't going to go real out of detail with the knives. But like I say, Spin your knife, spin your knife very wisely. I have a knife here, it was given to me a present. This knife costs over 150 bucks. It was given to me for a Christmas present a couple of years ago. Very nice knife, very heavy duty and very sharp. So anyway, also, uh, next thing I do, uh, wooden spoon. I got three of these. I use wooden spoons and all, most of my pots you see me use a wooden spoon. That way I don't scratch up the surface of my nice pots. I always use a wooden spoon as possible. You'll see me scoop with my large, I have a large uh, spoon like this where I scoop my final product up in. But you don't see me cooking with a metal spoon that often. I try to use a wooden spoon. It'll make your your life, your pots last a long, lot longer. Okay, whips. I got two kind of whips. I use a rubber whip and a wire whip. You, most times you'll see me use this. Another thing just like the spoon I don't want to scratch up my pots when I'm whipping something up. This one is I use when I'm whipping in a bowl, mixing bowl, something like that. I use my wire whip. But when I'm using a pan most of the time, I'll use this here plastic whip. This is very heat resistant. You can withstand heats up to 400 degrees. Also, spatulas. I have two kinds of spats. I have a straight edge and a curved one. The reason is, the straight edge I use, say for instance, if I had a pan out here, a pan that has an edge and I'm trying to get something out, it has that straight edge on it where I can actually scrape everything out of that pan. And you'll see that's why I have a straight edge spatula. And this has a high heat resistance too, 300, 400 degrees. It doesn't burn. You can lay it on the fire, it won't melt. It has that resistance. This thing costs about, about 30 bucks for this one spatula. Also, I have the one that's curved. This one here helps me get everything out of a bowl, like a round bowl. I have a mixing bowl. It helps me get everything out of there and don't leave nothing in. Say for something curved like this here cup, I can get everything, every corner in there because it's curved right there. This costs about 30 bucks also. So yeah. Also I have my measuring cups. Y'all probably don't see me measure a lot. Everything is pre-measured. I have a lot of measuring cups. I have a lot of measuring, uh, measuring spoons. So when my team was doing stuff, it's very important that they measure everything out like I have designed it because I want it to work for you. When I write the recipe, when I 
creating the recipe I make everything I do a dry run on all my ingredients every recipe I put out I do a dry run on them and make sure they work and then we put it together for the video and I give my team the recipe and the measurements and they measure out exactly like I want it that way when I do the video it will that's why you see it always comes out correctly every video you see my cakes pies rolls everything comes out because it's made to the cheese so I always have this is this is a quart this is two cups here and this is a cup container because I have other ones too but I like these glass ones here because you can really see the measurements better of course the, a measuring spoon what else I got here tongs don't skimp on tongs these are heavy duty tongs very heavy duty I got these at uh matter of fact I got these online one of them is normal these tongs cost me 40 bucks. You can find tongs 22 or 3 bucks in the in the Walmart or whatever. Don't buy them tongs. Them things going to break on you. The spring going to break on you within uh, 6 months. Invest in you some good tongs like this. It's good to grip. You got a locking mechanism when you lay them down. They fit in the drawer good. I can put it in the drawer right here. It closes very good. It's very, like I say, if, 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 if you really serious cook and cook a lot, try to invest in a good pair of, of, of tongs. Okay, I got scoops here, like when I do my hush puppy mix, muffin mixes, I try to invest in. I got two different sizes, one large, one a little bit larger. I got a scoop here when I do when I do my uh, hot water cornbread. This one works perfectly. I don't have to use my hands. And I got a bigger scoop here when I make major uh, cookies or just scooping something like muffin batter into a man. So I'm trying to invest in you some scoops and be very, very handy. Also a cake spatula. Y'all see when I ice cake, this is an offset spatula. When I go around the cake, I don't get my knuckles in the cake as I'm going around icing. And you see how I offset? And where it's offset, it's not smooth. This cane costs about five bucks. You can get it. Sometimes you can find these at Walmart. Very cheap. Very, if you ice a lot of cakes, frost a lot of cake, this is a good thing to invest in right here. Very, very good thing to have. Also, uh, a fish spatula. I call this a fish spatula because it has holes in it. When you pick stuff up, the grease doesn't stay on the spatula. It goes back in there. I call this my fish spatula. It's a very, very handy tool to have. I don't cook a lot of fried fish. Uh, in the skillet, sometimes using a deep fryer, but this is a good thing to have. Also, brush. Invest in the brush. I had this in a while. You know, I was brushing butter on my biscuits and brushing uh, uh, things on. I always best in the These are things that are very cheap. Cost a couple of bucks or so. You can actually get these at Walmart. Also, I got a call a bench scraper. When I do biscuits and things like this, I usually do it on my counter. I do it on a cutting board. This thing can get your stuff up really, really good. Pick it up like that. You can do it and scoop and put your stuff right into the trash can. You don't have to wipe it off like that. You just do it like this. Scoop it up in your hand. Put it in the trash can. This thing costs about five bucks. So you can get it at Walmart too also. I don't say go to Walmart. I go to Bed Bath & Beyond for a lot of my little gadgets. Also biscuit cutters. I have different sizes, you know. Large ones, small ones. Different colors for cookies. Things like that. That's good to have. I keep them too. Also my mallet. Y'all see me when I do my chicken fried steaks and things like that. Probably don't see off camera. I like to tenderize my meat. This little mallet to have is good to have. And you also use the side of it. You know, have grooves here. If I don't want to use groove, I can actually use the side of it to uh, to tenderize the meat or flatten something down too. So anyway, that's a little uh, got a little utensils I use. We'll come back here and I'm gonna show you my little casserole dishes and bowls that I use. Then we'll do the gadgets and this video will be over. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back in part three here. If I ain't bored, y'all, y'all still watching. That's amazing. Okay, mixing bowls that I use. I use a lot of bowls for prep and uh, getting things ready. If I wasn't like a uh, uh, food blogger or whatever you want to call it, I may wouldn't have as many. And a lot of these are uh, uh, gifts that I had. These are gifts from an old school soul food family uh, watcher, uh, subscriber. I wouldn't probably have these much, but I use all these have a specific purpose. This is one I use, as y'all can see, when I present things out on the on the thing when I'm doing the videos. I have the guys uh, and girls prep and put the things in here. Uh, I've had these 
these bowls for about 15 years. And I keep them very clean, very organized. They kept away in the first place, in a nice, safe place. And it have never been one broken yet. I'm very careful with actually all of my uh, cooking uh, things. These here I like comes in handy. Let me get these here. These here are good also. I like these because I can they have a rubber in here. And when I'm whipping stuff up, see if I got a, a whip here. I'm whipping stuff. It kind of stays uh, on my counter better. And I can just, you know, it doesn't move. It doesn't slide. It has a rubber. This is a three-quart one. It has a rubber on the bottom, which I very, I like a lot. I use these a lot when I'm, you know, whipping up things. Y'all probably don't see as much on the camera. Because I, this is something I don't really use on camera. It's something with prepping things and mixing things in that doesn't move. So I like these here. These here come in handy before, during, and after cooking. Before, of course, you can use it as prep. During, because I can use stuff to mix in them. And after, because they come with lids. Both of these come with lids. And say if I want to have something left over, I got lids to these. Make me look bad here on the camera here, huh? So, oh, you know what? These lids are for this one. The lids for this one is over here. These lids are for the uh, for the glass. I'm sorry, y'all. I got so much uh, lids here off camera. These lids here are for these right here. Right here, see? Hold on, let me find a lid. I know this will work. Yeah, these are for this one here. These lids are for these. And I have some lids for these over in the, in the, I grabbed the wrong one over in the counter. But I don't store nothing in the refrigerator in the glass. I, I'm very, very sensitive about my glass bowls. My crew, they know that too. When they wash them, be very careful for glass breaks. And of course, I have lids for these here. These lids here fit these. Fit the whole thing here. And I can put things in the refrigerator. Lids. And I use these before, doing and after too in the cooking process. But I, I mean, I, I, I suggest y'all to invest in, not, not all of these. Like I said, I cook a lot. I cook every day. I do a lot of cooking. I do it professionally. So I don't suggest y'all to, to invest in every one of these bowls. But it's good to get you one set of nice bowls to mix in. Okay, let's move along here. Okay, casserole dishes. I, make, I use a lot of different casserole dishes. Two, three of these have been donated to me through the, not donated, given to me, mailed to me by the Old School Soul Food family. I have a lot of different casserole dishes depending on what I'm making, what I'm doing. The best place to find casserole dishes, I'm going to give you some price on these. This one was 10 bucks. This one was 12, 12 bucks at Home Goods. I'm telling you, you go to Home Goods, for Home Goods in your area, Go over there and look at the casserole dish section. They have a lot of nice ones. This one, of course, was given to me. I think this one I bought a few years ago. I have so many. And I try to use or utilize as much of them as I can in my videos. So people can, you know, especially people that give them to me can see them. Okay, a couple more things and I'm going to get to the gadgets. I use two kind of mixing bowls from my KitchenAid mixer. Y'all can see. I use my metal one for when I'm doing, I only use a metal bowl most of the time when I need something cold, like when I'm doing whipped cream or something, this holds temperature of coolness more than this glass. So I use this. Other than that, y'all see me use this bowl. So it, it, it's better, visualization, visualization, how you say it, so y'all can see it better when I'm mixing up. And I can see also if I'm mixing good in here. This bowl costs about 70, 60, 70 bucks if you to buy it online or whatever. This was sent to me by a by a, a old school soul food fun follower mailed to me. So I really appreciate this. They sent it to me in the mail. I couldn't believe it. Kitchen aid bowl. So I really cherish it. So anyway, that's the end of this section. Next we're gonna get to my kitchen gadgets, and this video will be over and hope y'all learned something. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Okay, this is the last section. I'm going to put a lot in this last section. First, I'm going to do the kitchen gadgets right quick that I use and appliances that I use on a regular basis. First thing, there's my blender. This is what I use it early in the morning and late at night. Early in the morning, I make some smoothies before I go to work. I might want to do a banana and 
mint, and I just create stuff there. I put my honey, I got my honey right here. I keep on the stove here, the uh, old school, really, really honey, I have to keep on the stove, and you gotta keep it warm. And I'll make a smoothie before I go to work. Also, in the, sometime when I don't work the next morning, maybe I wanna, we'll keep this a secret, a vanilla shake with bluebell ice cream, and put some vanilla in there, a little malt, some malt in there, and make me a vanilla shake. That's what I use this for. That's why I wanted to share y'all. Also, if I want to blend something, I really don't use it only for my smoothies. Also, I got a food processor here. I got a big one here. When I grind up stuff, food process stuff, this here is a very nice gadget to have. I've had it for a while. I don't use it as much as I should, but I do use it. And I also have a small mini food processor. When I don't want to use a big one, I have a smaller version food processor here. This this does the same thing as this. It's just a smaller, you can't put as much in it. I have a small one. Also, this is a lifesaver here. It's a stick blender. Uh, I've had this thing for I don't know how long, y'all. I got, matter of fact, I got two of these. One was donated to me. I keep saying donated, gifted to me. And this is awesome when you want to blend something up. You don't want to have to break out all this. I just plug this up, hit it. I also got one that has a little attachment to it. Right here, this one's here a little bit more fancier. You can take this off. See if I can do this on camera. Put this together like this. Blend it together like this. Or you can take this attachment off. Put this back on here. If I can get it on here. Get it hooks up. Somehow it hooks up to this. This will hook up to this and it'll blend there also. So this one, this stick blender has this attachment. This one doesn't. So I use this one a lot also. Okay, uh, also, y'all know I got a, uh, uh, KitchenAid mixer when I do mix up things. But I also got a hand mixer here. Keep it together, all organized. I have my, uh, my, uh, whip and, uh, things in there. Keep it up in hand. And I'll use this sometime when it's not necessary to use my big one. I have this one also. Also, uh, Another thing I'm going to start doing, probably in the first of the year, and if I get a lot of comments that I, that y'all like to see this, which I use a lot, I just don't do a lot of videos on it because it's not really, really old school. It's my uh, Instant Pot. I did videos on it. On my Instant Pot, I love this here equipment. Instant Pot. This thing does so much stuff, and I cook so many things in it. I did a few videos on it. So if y'all want to see more recipes with the Instant Pot, like I say, old school, they didn't use Instant Pot. It's old school in the oven, just waiting hours and hours and stuff get done. And this can do it in, I can cook, my fact, I can do chitlins in here in 30 minutes. I can do red beans and rice in here in 45 minutes. I can cook a pork roast, pork shoulder, 10 pound pork roast in here in 45 minutes. I have recipes for that. If y'all want to see that, I definitely do that. Another gadget I keep on my counter, and I use this one on a regular basis. It's my uh, air fryer. This thing is an awesome piece of equipment. Right now, I only use it for warming up pizza and doing french fries in it. But this thing can do a lot of things. I did chicken wings in it. If y'all want to see me do more things with this, I would definitely do it. This air fryer is an awesome piece of equipment. And it's very healthy. So maybe in the beginning of the new year, I'll do that. Okay, a few more things here. And then we're going to close this video out. I got some platters I didn't show y'all that a lot of these platters, I also talk about home goods. These platters like this, of course I've had some for years. I like the plate. When I have a lot of things that I have so many equipments and dishes and things, I have a lot of party before 2020. This was a different year, but most of the time I have a lot of party like five or six times a year with friends and family come over, watch maybe games or just holidays and stuff and I do a big buffet in my house and I have all kinds of plated things so I use a lot of platters and dishes more than an average person so I use a lot of platters but a lot of these platters I can get the home goods five bucks nice ones yeah you got home goods like I said Bath Bath Beyond have a 75 percent off sale you can go online you get all this stuff pretty pretty much dirt cheap so like I said I do a lot of uh um have a lot of also cutting boards. I use two or three cutting boards when my guys are uh, uh, prepping things. I have this flat cutting board that I usually keep right here on the counter to protect my counter if I want to chop something really good. But this is the one I mainly use. You probably don't see this on video. What is that right here? This one here. 
I do this one mainly when I'm cutting up stuff because it's higher for me. I don't have to get this little two or three inches means a lot when you're six foot two like I am cutting things. So I use this one. I keep this one on the side. The guys use as they're prepping. And I keep a smaller one also on the side. A good cutting board, I only use wood. I don't use the plastic one. I don't use the glass one. I only like wood because I think it's easier on my knives. And it, my knife doesn't dull as much. So anyway, it's a lot of more things I could tell y'all. But I just want to kind of hit base up. Uh, how old school soul food is done, how it's brought together, the things I go through behind the scenes and my team does, the stuff that I use, stuff that helps me make my videos a little easier. Like I say, I don't expect y'all to have all this stuff like I have, but at least have a few of it to make your cooking things in it. Cause I see people see me cooking and ask, where you get this powder, where you get this pan? So I just want to make a video on everything and maybe I can sell and refer to the video and just check it out. So anyway, uh, I know it's a long video, but I hope y'all got something out of it. And leave a comment below if there's something I didn't touch on and you have questions, I'll try to get back to you. So anyway, let me close this video out like I do all other videos. Uh, please follow my other social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twist TV, um, YouTube, and uh, OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Until next time, have a blessed old school soul food day.